Hey everybody, welcome to TPG's World. It's me, TPG. Long time no see. It's been a long time. I don't even know when my last video was made. Probably months ago. Months and months and months and months ago. I, I, I can't even tell you when the last video was made. I'll have to look it up. Because guys, I don't honestly know when the last one was made. That's a long time ago. Um, but I got a lot to talk about in this video. It's a hot, hot, hot day here in August. Um, August 31st, as a matter of fact, 2023. Um, so I want to uh, just, uh, I'm driving to uh, Edgefield, South Carolina, where I'm directing Gilligan's Island, the musical. So I just kind of, I decided to do a vlog. I got so much to talk about from buying a new car to my weight loss journey to um, lots of things that have gone on in my life in the last uh, few months that, since I saw you guys last. Um, so let's just get to going and uh, get to talking. Um, so, oh gosh, where to start? Gosh, uh, let's just start with a new car. Let's start from the beginning. So um, guys, I was driving, you know, I drove a, an old beat up my car was so old. I had her since she was a year old. 2004, 2010 Kia Rio. I loved that car. She was beautiful. I loved her. She was my girl. She was paid for, bought, and I kept, every time she'd break down, I would go to the store, take her to the mechanic, get her fixed, put a band-aid on her, get her fixed, put a band-aid on her, get her fixed. Kept doing that, getting a band-aid on her, get her fixed. Spending lots of money getting her fixed because I felt like it was the best thing because I didn't want to make a car payment I was spending a lot of money getting her fixed and she was getting worse and worse and worse and worse Because she was so old Finally my mechanic joked with me and kept saying, you know, drive her till the wheels fall off, drive her till the wheels fall off, drive her till the wheels fall off. Well, I was driving down the road about two weeks ago on a Thursday because as you guys know, school started early here uh, Schools year-round here now. So we started early 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 August and uh, well, I was driving down the road, and uh, lo and behold, I was I'm driving, and literally, the wheels did fall off. Um, literally, uh, one of the wheels went off one way, and uh, luckily, I did not flip. Luckily, I was turning slowly, or I would have flipped the car, according to my mechanic, and probably lost control of the car and could have probably died. So it was definitely something that could have killed me. Luckily, it, I'm safe and was just, like I said, going very slow around a curb and was safe and sound and did not get hurt which is a good thing. So I had to uh, take that day, I had to pay like $300 to get a tow truck to come get me that early in the morning because of course my mechanic's tow truck, everybody was out sick that day or he wouldn't have charged me as much and so everything was crazy, it was a long, crazy day. I called my ex-husband to come help me get my car moved, uh, to come help me buy a new car. And of course he's very efficient, he's like, we're, we're taking you here, we're going to this car. So he really didn't let me go look at cars, which I kind of resented for a while. So I was stuck going to this one lot in my town, which is the most expensive and I was kind of forced, not forced, but I was kind of stuck buying this one car that I'm kind of stuck with now. Um, and I really didn't get to look and shop like I wanted to. I ended up with a 2014 Toyota Prius. And uh, it's not a bad car on gas mileage and everything, but let me kind of tell you what happened. I did not want a car payment, and my car payment is probably not as bad as my mind felt like it was. But, you know, I don't make a super amount of money in my job, and in either one of my jobs. And Target is so independent with jobs and something like that, you never know, like, what you're going to get. So with that being said, it was like, where do you go? What do you say? You know, this kind of thing. And um, I literally went into this place to buy this car and I was so overwhelmed with everything, the, my car breaking down, not being able to get it fixed, crying my eyes out that I literally was like blubbering. I had a nervous breakdown or not a nervous breakdown, but like a panic attack in the office of the lady's office buying the car. I had like two or three in there. Just got, I didn't even test drive the car. I was like, I'm done. I'm getting this car. I did not get behind the wheel of the car until I went back and handed them the check. I refused to get behind the wheel of the car. I didn't want any part of it. I was done with it. I was just, I was done. I was done. So I went, when we went to the loan place to get the loan at the bank, I literally had like three panic attacks in that guy's office. My mechanic called. I, I was crying. I was like, please tell me you can fix this car. He's like, you know, Bradley, it's a death trap now. This could have killed you. You know, blah, 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 blah. So I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. I did not want to get my car, but I did not want a car payment. I just knew I physically, at this point in my life, I still have some things I'm still trying to get under control. You know, financially, I just was like, I cannot take on a car right now. But what am I going to do? I have to get back and forth to work. I don't live in a city where I can take, like, public transportation. I live in a small, in a town. Not a small town. I live in a city. But my city does not have, like, it's not like Atlanta or... Charleston or Chicago, where we have buses and and you know 
metro and stuff like that where you can get around. We don't have that kind of stuff here. So, so you, you either drive or you walk. And I live far away from both my jobs. I mean, I can get a ride to school. That's not the problem. But because I think my friend works at school, I can get a ride to school. But Target would be the problem because my schedule at Target gave worship hours. And, and I, it just would be hard back and forth to get back and forth. And I need my job at Target because that's the way. So... Uh, and plus doing the play, you know, so it was just a lot. So I, I literally got this Prius and um, I didn't even get to enjoy it. I, the first time I got behind it was driving it home. It's got a few things about it that um, I didn't like if, now that I see it. You know, it's like uh, a couple things I wish I would have checked more thorough. Um, I made them put a backup camera in it, so they did do that because um, I wanted one. That was one of the conditions of buying a car. I wanted a backup uh, a rear camera, um, which I got. It's a hatchback, which I don't like hatchbacks. I couldn't see it at first. It freaked me out. I, I had another panic attack trying to look at it, but I've gotten used to it now because it has like a line in the middle, like a bifocal line. I didn't like that. So it was a lot of things. And, and I literally went home. That was on Thursday. I cried all night. I had six or seven panic attacks in my sleep. Woke up crying, freaking out. Called in sick on Friday. Uh, had to call a friend who had to stay with me all day because I literally was just a basket case. I did not think I was going to make it through the day. I cried all day. I went to the bank. I begged them, what am I going to do? Please take this car back. You know, what am I going to do? I called the lady crying and in the state of South Carolina. Uh, there's a no limit law. So once you buy a car, you cannot bring it back in the state of South Carolina. Some states has a 30-day you know, you can take it back. Not South Carolina. So once you buy a car in South Carolina, you are stuck with it, which really kind of sucks. It's That's what really, really sucks. I'm sorry, guys. If you guys wonder, I just shaved, and I bring out to trim my hair until, like, my, my beard right here. My beard is, like, super itchy. And I got to, like, trim it when I get home. It's like, oh, it's so scratchy. And I haven't put my lotion on it to make it, like, uh, soft yet. It's really scratchy. Uh, that's what's going on. I promise. Um, so don't be saying all kinds of crazy crap. So anyway, um, so you, in the state of South Carolina, we don't have that. So you're stuck with it. So I'm like, screw it. I'm stuck with this car for the next five years of my life making this payment. And it's not a ridiculous payment, guys. But I do need to get a better job making a little bit better money than I make. Because the school pays me crap. Okay? Crap. I make better money at Target. Which I could go full-time at Target. And I'm considering that. Now, as far as my employment goes, I am considering leaving education only because I'm tired of it. I'm tired of education. I'm tired of dealing with with. Uh, it's a very. We don't get enough recognition for what we do. We don't get appreciated for what we do. A lot of times, we don't get told we're appreciated. It's you're only pointing out what you do bad and not what you do good, and that bothers me a lot of times. So, with that being said, I want to say that I'm looking into working like from home. I've had several people send me some stuff in the last couple of days to work from home. Um, I've had my resume done. I'm now, I don't have a lot of skills as far as like typing and things like that goes um, because I didn't, I didn't do all of that growing up. But I'm hoping I can kind of get hired with somebody with no experience and get trained and learn how to do this and work from home for a while. I know Amazon's hiring for the holidays. I know UPS is hiring for the holidays. And even if I just work for a little while until I can get something else to tide me over, um, I'm going to try that. Um, you know, just I, but I, I just think it's time for me to part ways after eight or nine years with education. I can go full time with Target, but I don't. I can't really go full time with Target until October because I have to keep my uh, insurance because of my medical uh, stuff going on medically with me, and I got some uh, stuff going on that I have to uh, have medicine for and stuff like that. So I can't do anything medically with that right now, uh, as far because I can't get my insurance at all with Target changed over until October. So that would be like next to October of, you know, that's coming up, you know, like a couple months, so that would be, I would have to do it in October, so it's not long, but still, you know, coming up in October, so that's not far, but I would have to do it soon, um, you know, to get insurance to that. So it's not long, it's not far, but, um, you know, I have to do that, so I have to make my mind up by October if I'm going to go full-time with Target. Um, but anyway, I got a lot to think about. So. That's one thing. So I am looking for a job. I've been searching nonstop for days. But, you know, when you apply for a job online and then you put in, you know, you type in, like you go to a D, you type it in. I woke up to 75 text messages from all over the place, not even places I applied for. I'm waking up to 50,000 emails a day from places going, you know, so it's just a bunch of crap emails and shit. So it's crazy. But so, all of that. Now let's talk about my weight loss. As you see in my face, I have lost over 40 pounds. I got on that Manjaro shot. I did a TikTok about it. And 
I have not done a TikTok since then to even do an update. I know a couple people have broke me wanting to do an update on Facebook and as well as on TikTok and here on Facebook, I mean on, on YouTube. Um, I started the shot about five months ago. I really went very quickly through the doses. I Most people stay on the doses like two or three months each dose, not me. I was like boom, boom, boom. I did not have a reaction to any of them. And I've heard, I've had some people, I know some people have shared some uh, uh, um, reactions that they had from them with me. Um, several people from, you know, that I know from online have shared their reactions. Uh, some people I know that I, from online have shared their reactions. Some people here have shared their reactions of, of how they had bad reactions. I honestly did not have one, except I did in the very, very beginning. I, I ate. The first month I ate everything in sight. I, ate, I swear to God, y'all, I ate like I was pregnant. I don't know how I lost any weight because I ate like I was pregnant. But I went, and I'm going to go ahead and reveal my weight because I don't like to talk about it. I went from Two, uh, two eighty nine. Now I was tipping the scale to almost three hundred, which is the biggest I was. To down to two fifty. So I've lost almost for over forty pounds right in that weight loss there. So that's not bad. I'm still bigger than I want to be. I don't like being two fifty, but I'm, I want to lose fifty more, and then I'm right at where I want to be. But um, I'm still a big, bigger guy. But I, I'm bigger than I've been. But I'm better than I was. I feel a lot better. My face shows a lot better. Um, I think it shows in my face. My belly's almost completely gone. My, my man boobs, as I call them, they're almost gone. Um, my clothes fall off of me. Um, but I'm not buying new clothes yet because if I'm going to continue to lose weight, um, what's the point in, you know, buying more clothes and keep buying more and more clothes if you're just going to keep losing weight? So I, I'm just like, okay, let's just keep, um, you know, let's just keep, um, you know, wait till you lose all your weight, then go out and buy all your new clothes and kind of celebrate it. And so, you know, right now I can still keep adjusting my belts and that's kind of my goal with, with the whole weight loss journey with that so far. Um, but I feel good. I, it makes you feel a little bit more confident in yourself to know you lost that much weight and things like that. Um, it it's, makes you happy and, and um, a little more self-conscious. Uh, I mean, I'm conscious self-confident to feel better about yourself. Um, you know, weight loss wise, I uh, I did end up um, having to go to the uh, ER today um, for a situation I was I'm having. Um, I've been having to go to a urologist for some problems I'm having, um, and uh, I with that situation sent me to the emergency room today. And um, I found out again I'd lost even more weight, and I was like, "Dang, this is just getting great." And they were like, "Oh my gosh, you know, look at how much weight you've lost." And, and I was like, yeah, and so it was kind of cool. And every time I see my doctor, she's like, oh my God, you lost so much weight. You know, you're good. And so, uh, the Manjaro was great for me. Now, now Ozempic did nothing for me. And I know a lot of people are on that Ozempic and it did nothing for me. But the only reason Ozempic did nothing for me was because Ozempic was, I couldn't get it because it was like always out. So like I was on it and I never changed dose. I stayed on the same dosage. I just never like got off of it. But I have a friend who's lost a hundred pounds of Ozempic. I, just, I couldn't get it. Like, I would get it, and then it would be out for, like, a month, and I wouldn't be able to get it. So I wasn't taking it consistent it was consistent enough to lose weight on it, and I think that was the biggest problem for me with, with those Um But Manjaro, I was like, we started it, boom, I lost some weight. I went in a month later. I was like, let's go to the next dose. Now, there is one more dose, the 15, and um, I want to go to that next, which is the last dose. She said she's going to keep me on the 10 for about two to three months. This will be my second month on the 10, um, or my third month on the 10, my third month on the 10 going up this next one. And then after this month, I'm going to ask her to put me on the 15, if she can put me up, move me up to the 15 when I see her again. Um, it's coming up uh, because I want to uh, go up to the 15. But she said the 15 causes people to get really nauseous and sick and stuff like that. So she has she hasn't had a lot of people have uh, the best results on the 15. So she usually keeps most people at the 10. But I did. I, I went very quickly. I was like, I'm not having a reaction. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. I'm losing weight. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Where some people stayed on like the 7 for a while or the 5 for a while. Not me. I just kept moving. So I got on the 10 pretty quick. The 10 was really hard to find though when I got on it. Like I, I was really scared. But so far I've not had problems. What I've done is I've just ordered it. Right when I get on the third shot, I order it. Um, but I haven't had a problem. Well, I did have one time. I did end up in the emergency room when I first got it. Again, another trip in the emergency room was because I don't drink a lot of water naturally. I just don't yeah, until I got on Manjaro. Um, as you see, I got water now. Um, because I just, I grew up in an era where water was just not a big thing. We didn't drink water. We drank milk. We drank tea. We drank soda. We didn't drink a lot of water. So 
Water was just not our thing. We just didn't do it. So, you know, I knew I'd got on it and I had a doctor friend and she was like, well, it makes you drink more water. It makes you not hungry. So you need to make sure you, you know you drink water because you're going to forget to drink. Well, I did. And I did not drink enough water and I ended up very, 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 very uh, dehydrated. Matter of fact, they told me today that I'm a little bit dehydrated and drink a little bit of water. Um, so I do need to stop up here and get some water because this is really hot and nasty. Um, I'm in my car today because it's hot. It's, uh, it's that's not room temperature, it's outside temperature. Um, so yeah, it was it was nasty. But um so um but I so and that was only that was the only reaction I had. And that to me I call that man made because I kinda like put myself in that situation of making myself sick with it because I ended up not doing what I was supposed to do. But I didn't have a lot of the other problems that other people had with it. And, and I'm, I'm glad and I feel bad that some people did have reactions to it because I, it's done me a world of good. I feel bad and I, I tell people, no, I didn't. And I, I don't mean this like a jerk and I don't want people to think I'm trying to be a jerk because I'm not by any means of being a jerk um, about it. Um, I just, I had really positive results with it and I'm very proud of myself for it and I'm proud of my weight loss. Uh, it's too hot to do a lot of exercising. I haven't done a lot of the exercises I need to do. Once it calms down a little bit, then I will be able to exercise and I'm going to take my puppy Oreo, which uh, some of you guys made on a YouTube video I did. Um, one last thing I want to talk about and then I'm going to get out of here because Jesus Christ, this video is long. It's almost 20 minutes long. Um, wow. Um, so much has gone on in my life. I don't even know the last one I talked to you guys was. Um, I adopted in June of this past year. I um, saw an, a thing online on Facebook about a dog. And you know, I love dogs. Dogs are my heart. My weakness are animals. And she was a, a dog that had been abused her whole life. She was four years old. So I thought she was just a cute little thing. Um, she'd been abused her whole life, beaten. And uh, she never felt human companion, the companion, companionship or any kind of human love. She had been beaten so hard that she was I thought partially blind in one eye, deaf in one ear. Um, she had been beaten to where her brain had neurological issues and she had seizures. And the pound was going to put her down. And they referred to her as a special needs dog. Well, for those of you that know, I, I used to work with special needs kids. I taught special needs kids and things like that. And so I was like, I'm going to meet this dog. I refuse to allow an animal to be put down in a pound for someone else's mistreatment of this animal especially an animal that they refer to as special needs. I'm going to meet this amazing dog. So I I left, I was teaching summer school. I left summer school, I went, left early, and went in to meet this dog, and I immediately, she clung to me. She felt we, it was instant love at first that her name was Everly, Everly. And um, I don't know if I told you guys, Gypsy passed away, my dog Gypsy. I'm going to start by prefacing saying, I lost Barkley in October, as you guys know. We lost Barkley, sweet little Barkley, who belonged to Kip. Barkley passed away in October. Let me preface all this with saying Barkley died in October. I then lost Gypsy on Valentine's Day, the day before Valentine's Day, my sweet, wonderful Gypsy, who I was my first dog who I had. This is going to be rough. I lost Gypsy on Valentine's Day. Um, she passed away of kidney failure, so I've lost Gypsy. So I've lost Charlie, Gypsy, and Barkley. Okay, so I've had those three in the past year and a half. Okay, now, Everly, and then I adopted Oreo, which was a, a dog from, that I got, he's a puppy, but well, he's two years old, so I'm going to talk about it, like, he's all the video you know about Oreo. So anyway, I lost Gypsy, so I was I was like, okay, I'm going to take this puppy, you know, she'll, she's going to be sweet, I'm going to show her love, this is what Gypsy would want, you know, Gypsy, Charlie and Barkley would love it. She loved beds, dog beds like Barkley did, so I said, Barkley would want her to sleep in his old bed. So I gave her Barkley's old bed. She loved it. So she was doing really great. I found out her medicine was only going to cost me like 12 bucks a month for her, her uh, whatever she took. Um, and so I was happy. She was doing really good. She came out Oreo, fell in love with her. They were best friends. All was great. Everything was great. Then one day I was home from school. I was home and she had a major, major seizure. She had like two really bad, two or three really bad seizures that day. So I called the doctor and they said to up her medicine. So I, they, well, they had given her a different medication. So I, they had given her a different medication. So they said, might want to change her back to the other one. Let's see, let's up the, let's up the doses of what we got. So they up they had taken her from one medicine to a different medicine, which is what I think her downfall, what I think caused all the problem. So then she, so she was fine for a while on that. And then one night I heard something, I got up, I heard a noise and then something was silent, like something in my wash was in my and I was like, what is that noise? So I thought maybe I'd 
my washing machine was off balance. I got up and come around and she was having a seizure on the floor and the washing machine was kicking the washing machine. And so I, I helped, I got down the floor and I helped her, you know, when she came to, I picked her up and I carried her to my room. And she had like, I don't even know how many seizures she had that night, guys. She had so many in my bed, like she was drooling, my whole pillow was up. I woke up and I had claw marks all over my chest where she clawed my chest up all night. Um, it was horrible. Um, the bad part about it was the next day was the first day of school. So as you know, we cannot miss school. Um, kids are away. It's, it's like forbidden. It's instant termination. So I had to leave her. So I don't know how many she had while I was gone, but she seemed a little bit better. She was walking and everything when I left. Uh, so I got home that day and I called the vet and they said, you know, give her her medicine up it to this when you get home. By the way, I gave her, as soon as I walked in the door, I gave her her, I went straight to her, gave her her dose. As soon as I did, she fell over, had a seizure. I yanked her up. I took her, rushed her straight to the vet. I said, I'm taking her vet. I don't care what I can get. I'm taking her. I took her to the vet. She had like five or six more seizures in the vet's office. She had a total of 48 seizures that we, that we counted. They gave and I counted within a three-day period. She kept having them the next day. That was a Friday. Uh, Saturday, she had several more during the daytime. Then they became like focal seizures when they started like her face was twitching. This poor dog would fight, fight, fight. She would, she, it was so horrible. I would cry and cry and cry. I was trying so hard to save this poor little baby. I didn't know what else to do until finally, um, that was all day. Saturday, I took her back to vet. They gave her more medicine. They kept upping her medicine. They kept giving her more stuff. They kept telling me Sunday, you know, get fluids down her. So I was having to give her a drop of food. I was doing everything every hour. I was giving her medicine every four hours. I was giving her Xanax, like they told me to give her Xanax and all this stuff to help her. You know, I was I was bound to her. And I was gonna make this dog live. I rescued this dog for her to live, for everything for this dog to make it. Monday. Um, I, she was resting Sunday night. She started resting. She was sleeping very good. She slept through the night on Monday night with my Sunday night with me. And the vet said, you know, let her rest. Try to get food in her, but let her rest because she needs rest. You know, her body's tired after seizures like that. They need to rest. So Monday they said, you know, just let her rest. It's fine. So when I got home, so I said, okay, well, I was really scared to leave her. They said, no, no, you know, she's fine. This medicine here, they gave me an extended release pill. They said, she give her this. She should be fine while you're at work to take this medicine. So this will give her the doses she needs throughout the day she'll be fine so I, I left her I kissed her goodbye I said I love you girl you know it's gonna be okay I petted her she was uh she got to where like she would walk but she couldn't turn sideways so we thought oh lord she's probably lost like she couldn't turn around or whatever so but she was sleeping mostly you know when I left she was sleeping and resting and I gave her some water through a dropper I gave her some chicken soup uh chicken noodle soup that I made her through a dropper um I was scared I didn't want to like you know flood her lungs or anything but I was trying my best and so I went to school and I worried all day that Monday. I just, I prayed all day. I said, please, Lord, you know, please let Everly, Everly Rose live. I named her Everly Rose after Gypsy Rose. Well, her name was Everly, but I called her the Rose after Gypsy Rose. Well, I got home that day from school. And when I got home, they had literally um, taken her. She was laying down. It was very hot that day. It was like 90 degrees. And my house was very hot. And uh, she was laying in front of a fan. And I touched her. And she was ice cold. And I thought, oh, God, she's gone. And... I was like, oh, God, oh, God, she's gone. And and when I went to, I said, oh, my goodness. So I went to pick her up, and she moved, and I realized, oh, gosh. So I, I called the bed. I said, bring her in right now. I, I texted, I called, and they said, bring her in. So I brought her in, and she was so bad off that they said, you know, the best thing to do was to put her down. And I, I couldn't at first. I cried. I begged them. I said, please, is there anything we can do? You know, what can I do to save this poor dog? You know, I rescued this poor girl. You know, she's had this rough, rough life. What can I do to save her? And there was nothing that I could do. I tried up to the last second. I begged. I pleaded. You know, I, I said, is there medicine I can get? You know, um, she was, she was um, so worn out and so tired. And so I had to make the decision to put her down. So I, I decided, and it cost me a lot of money, to have her cremated. Because I felt like she'd had a rough life, and the least she could do was be cremated. Um, to have a decent, you know, not that that's a decent burial, but most dogs that, like, I, I had Charlie and Barkley and Gypsy cremated, um, and I probably will have, it, it, depending on my finances and the time, I'm buying a new car, it might be different, but Lulu and Ruffles, and, um, you know, cremated. So I had her cremated, which is probably not the right decision. But at the time, I was so devastated. I wanted to honor her in some way to keep her around in my heart. And I cried and cried and cried. So 
with that being said, she's gone. I had to put her down, and I tried to save her, but she did not make it. And uh, But I had her for a month, but she did die. She kissed me um, on the cheek when they gave her the first shot. She jumped up and kissed me, kissed me, and I said, stop, don't do it. I don't want to get the damn it. Let me get cry. But it was just, I knew that it was the right decision, but it, I toyed with it in my heart for a long time. Is this right? Is this wrong? Is this right? Is this wrong? Back and forth. In my heart, it was the right decision, and I knew it. But I had to, I had to convince myself what was right. Anyway, guys, I love you. I'm sorry this video is almost 30 minutes long. I haven't seen you guys in so long. I know there's probably not a lot of you left out there. I'm going to come back to YouTube. I'm going to come back to TikTok. I just, there's a lot going on in my world. There's a lot has gone on. I, you know, like I said, I, I will talk so much more to you guys. I, I, my studio is a mess um, where I had to stand in my room. It got destroyed. Um, so when you see my next video in that room, you'll see what I mean totally got trashed. Um, my Funko Pops were put everywhere and I have a lot of Funko Pops to show you guys. i um, still got some cool ones to show you. Um, but anyway, I love you guys and um, I hope that everybody's doing great. Shout out to all my wonderful friends out there who I still keep up with. I hope all of you guys are doing great. Um, be good to yourselves. Be safe. Um, I hope everybody's okay in the way of the hurricane and I hope everybody stayed safe in the hurricane. Um, I love you guys. Be yourself. Bye.